Welcome to Behind the Music, the Houston Chamber Choir's weekly podcast. I'm Sinjin Flynn. This time, we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Houston Chamber Choir's With One Accord podcast. And I'm joined by a very special group of people, the people who make the podcast possible. Let's start with the founder and artistic director of the Houston Chamber Choir, Robert Simpson. And we have managing director, Mariam Kalili. Operations and patron services manager, April Harris. Marketing manager, Carolina Borja. Our marketing and operations assistant, Nutran. And the choral conducting intern, Emily Jenkins. Welcome everybody, thank you for being here. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Bye. Well, let's begin this celebration by talking to uh, Bob Simpson and Mariam Kilili. And I want to start with you, Bob, and talk to us about how this podcast came about with One Accord. Whose idea was it? What was the idea behind it? Well, it, it may have been my idea, but the, the whole staff got together after we realized that our season was coming to a grinding and immediate halt. And we thought, how can we continue to keep contact with our audience? And so we brainstormed and came up with a concept of each day, if we, if we take ourselves back to that time, we realized that we were all in a state of shock. Our world had just come crashing to a complete and sudden stop. And we were feeling isolated and dazed and uncertain about what each day was going to hold. And we thought if we could bring a little music to people, if we could continue to keep touch with our audience, what a gift that would be both for them and for us. And so we started to think about how we might be able to do that without really knowing anything about the technological challenges or how we might do this. We just said, yeah, let's set aside a time every day when we can make a, a, a video or, or an audio recording and send it out to our audience. And so that's how it began. And that morphed into Music Monday. And it began, yes, as a week, as a daily program, as a matter of fact, every day of the week, we would produce another program that would be based on a program that the chamber choir had made, a concert that we had already recorded and a piece would be played. I would introduce it. Uh, and then we realized after a month or so of that, that it would really be fun if we opened it up um, and did other kinds of things. And so we went to a two time a week, a Monday and a Friday. And uh, Miriam can tell you about how the Friday episode started to evolve. Mariam. Yeah, it's, it's been an exciting journey, let me tell you. Um, and it, I just wanna give Bob credit. It was his brilliant idea to to really rally all of us and bring us together because we went home and, and our season ended and we thought, well, what are we going to do now? And so the podcast gave us all purpose. Everyone on my staff suddenly had a reason to get up in the morning and be excited knowing that we could still connect with our patrons and our singers because we were all separated from one another. So, you know, after we realized we, could expand and we were learning new skills and getting better and better at what each of us was doing as a team, we opened it up to include an education spotlight, which is hosted by April Harris, our operations manager. Um, and then we decided we wanted to do something that was a little bit more fun and lighthearted and get to know each of our collaborators, uh, anybody that's ever collaborated with the Houston Chamber Choir when it comes to putting on a concert. And so with that, Behind the Music was born and we reached out to you, Sinjin, and asked you to join the team. And so it really has evolved over time. You know, we weren't sure how long the podcast was gonna last because we didn't know how long we were going to be required to stay at home and social distance. And so the more time that passed, the better we got at being podcast producers, getting better with our our, soft, our video editing software and our um, the different platforms that we host the podcast on begin to expand. We started off with just being on Anchor, and now we're on every podcast platform that there is uh, audio-wise. And then we also have the video component, which some of you at home are watching right now. Well, Bob, what does this mean, the With One Accord podcast? What does this mean? for the organization, for the Houston Chamber Choir? 
Well, it means a couple of important things. First, it means that the chamber choir was, was able to take this challenge and not just survive, but thrive to do something that has actually increased our ability to communicate with people. Our reach is now global. Uh, and so we have taken this challenge and used it to great benefit for the organization, but also for the choral community. Uh, after a period of time of doing chamber choir concerts, we realized that this might be an opportunity to acquaint our audience with choirs around North America. And so we started to invite mm -hmm. all of the choirs that I know and love from Vancouver to Miami, from Boston to Los Angeles. And each week now on Monday, uh, we host uh, one of those choirs and the artistic director introduces the piece that they sing. And it's so that, that Music Monday has become kind of a hub around which the choral community is now spinning during this time. And we are friends with on a, on a much deeper level with the whole range of both professional children's volunteer choruses around the country. Uh, we now have knit together a really strong community of choral musicians uh, gathering together on Monday to share our art and, uh, and our friendship. It's sort of ironic that in a time of pandemic, it's actually bringing people together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. even if it's only virtually. Right, it's, you know, this is really tied, not just choral musicians, but our patrons in our community um, here locally. It When we first started the podcast, I can't tell you how heartwarming it was to get correspondence from our patrons, from our subscribers, saying how much they treasured that 12 noon hour when they would get to hear Bob's voice. Because for many of them, you know, they weren't, they weren't being around other people. They weren't hearing other people. And Bob has such a warm, welcoming, uh, familiar voice. And so to hear his voice come on on the podcast airways meant so much to to our greater community. And it's it's the out you know the response has been tremendous. So I think it's really meant a lot to each of us um, in a very emotional way. True. We'll talk about some of those reactions. What what have you heard from people? And where are these people? Oh my goodness. We have, well, we have our subscribers here in Houston and they have been very touching with their responses. You know, we love, we'll send out a, an e-blast every Monday and Friday to alert our community that we have a new podcast that is ready to listen to or to view. And more often than not, the subscribers will shoot us a quick email. Oh my gosh, I love this. This reminds me of my time 20 years ago singing in this choir um, with this particular group, or this reminds me of my childhood, or this is one of my all time favorite choral pieces. I was, you know, traveling abroad and I heard this piece performed by this group. And it's just, we get to learn so much about the people that comment and give us feedback. But more than that, our podcast is now reaching people in other countries. It's reaching people all over North America. Uh, as Bob mentioned, you know, having a choir uh, perform uh, and debut on our Music Mondays has introduced us to Canadians and then also introduced those Canadians to the Houston Chamber Choir. And so each week that Bob has a different choir selected from another place around the country, it's sort of like these friendships are being built and these new exposures are taking place. It's really, it's fascinating to keep track of the analytics on our end as a staff and to see what country is now viewing our website or listening to our podcast track. And I'll add that from the choral conductor standpoint, when I send out an, an invitation, uh, I am perfectly prepared for people to say, you know, we'd love to, but we're just too busy or this isn't fitting into our schedule. We get immediate response is saying, what a great idea, we'd love to participate. Yes, one or two have told us that it's just coming at a bad time, they want to postpone until they can do it at another time. But we are now uh, at the first anniversary and I have perhaps received three of those emails in the course of this year. The rest of them from organizations that, that go back to a uh, hundred years uh, or more that with, with a strong, strong artistic heritage 
are ready to say yes, because what we ask them to do is to pick their favorite piece of uh, recorded from live performance and then give a short mm -hmm. introduction. And the, the choral conductors are thrilled to be able to show their choirs off and to know that, that we are ready to be their, their supporters too, because I do, as you know, an introduction that, that highlights their achievements. And after the episodes, they'll write back and say, gee, this was really wonderful. We're so grateful. And of course, um, Carolina sends out all of the social media contacts so that they're able to spread the word through their audience and their singers and their community. So while we are um, allowing uh, ourselves to be that vehicle, we're, we're also making a, a lot more uh, friends for the chamber choir as well. So it's just a win-win. It's, it's just a perfect win-win. Well, look, thank you both very much for a wonderful idea and a wonderfully executed idea. And uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Robert Simpson, Mariam Khalili. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so Sanjay. much, Sanjin. Just let me say that it's one thing to have an idea. It's another thing to make it happen. And so uh, without this incredible staff, without Miriam and April and Carolina and New, this would have just stayed an idea. And so I, I just want to make public uh, appreciation for all that you have done to make this, this dream come, come about and be so meaningful to people around the world. Well, I think we're going to talk to those people right now, the people that actually uh, you know put the nuts and bolts together. So anyway, Bob, Mariam, thank you both very much. Thanks so much, Sinton. Thanks. Well, as I said, we now get to meet some of those people that uh, put the podcast together. So welcome to uh, Carolina and to Nu. Carolina, this falls into your lap as the marketing manager for the Houston Chamber Choir. So what all is involved in putting an episode together? Ah, uh, I don't even have the words to describe it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, I guess there's tons of things. There's tons of planning, you know, coordinating with the guests. We have different guests. Um, we, we promote choirs and um, the artistic directors, but then in the behind the music, we get to invite people that we have collaborated with. and. And it's almost like a kind of like a time traveling thing for me because a lot of the guests that we invite were before the before my time and before news time. So then we're looking and hearing about all those concerts and going back to the material. So it's like it's really a joy and a pleasure to be immersed in so much material and going back and doing all um, those cuts, you know, listening to the people that have done previous seasons. So what sort of time commitment is involved for you? Because yeah. twice a week, every week, that's a sort of relentless schedule, isn't it, Carolina? Yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of sweet because that's where we're, that's where the world is. Like time is so subjective now. We we're really I'm mm. we're really living day by day now. We don't know what's what's heading out tomorrow. So I think in terms of time commitment, we just really want to plan well. We, we have that calendar and we plan well and we make deadlines, you know, meet. But in between, we just give it our all. Um, yeah, there's been some late nights. <laughs> We've been learning on how to, you know, get all the big work done, when it's better to do things. We've been learning about internet, you know, um, speed and when it's better to upload big files <laughs> what and when it's not you know but um there's been a learning curve but for sure it's it's a big commitment in time a lot of people know that video editing takes a lot of time but they just don't know like how specific like time consuming it is and you know now i can tell you that like average you know one minute of video editing can take up to one hour of, I mean, the one, one minute of like the real production can take up to one hour of video editing. So, you know, with like an average of behind the music, it can range between 30 minutes to 40 minutes. That is like almost like a whole week for me, like, and then divided between me and Carolina. So it's, but then at the same time, it's 
it's, it's labor intensive, but I can learn a lot from it. There are still, you know, I've been doing this for like a year now, right? We're in like one year celebration, but there's still something new that I can learn episode after episode. So it just, it's just a very exciting journey for me. So, Nu, when I have recorded a, an interview for Behind the Music, and I then upload the file to you guys, what do you do with it then? How do you proceed in your production? Right. So, you know, like the majority of people right now, right, we're using Zoom for interview. And one great thing about Zoom is that it allows us to like, actually record while we're in session, right? But then when I took a look at the Zoom recording, the, the quality of the Zoom recording itself is not so great. So what else can we use that can record our Zoom interview, but with a higher quality, higher definition? And that's the answer. It's a screen recording on our computer that can help us do that. And so in this case, you know, with Behind the Music on your computer's engine, it's QuickTime, which is on um, like Apple's MacBook. And the results are much better. Yeah, you can see like um, the color, it's much vibrant. And also the details like on your face and in the background is much sharper. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. Zoom recording and screen recording, each one has its own advantage. So because Zoom recording actually, the, the audio on the Zoom recording is better. So, you know, Zoom recording for the audio and then screen, uh, screen recording, I'm sorry, screen recording for um, the video. And so when I get your files, I get to like mix and match and, you know, just give out the best of both words. I know that for uh, the behind the music guests, one of the things that we ask of them is to provide photographs so that we can um, illustrate really some of the uh, the milestones that we talk about during the interview and that's just another layer of, uh, of potential confusion to add into the uh, the production isn't it Carolina getting that all well, together but then I have to credit you because you came up with the idea of live to tape and that's that's so um it's amazing to work that way. We do have a lot of material and we do a lot of post-production, but we always try to stay as close as possible to your idea of live to tape, having it as a real, you know, radio station interview kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that's also nice because it it you you can still have that genuine, you know, answer and response without having to go very um, detailed in the editing. But the um, but going back to the archive just makes it a lot more emotional. Like we've got guests like Gail Westcott. I mean, she, she's been a reporter for ages. She has the best material ever. There was so much material that we wanted to incorporate and not enough time. You know, we have musicians that have over 40 years of professional life that we want to include. Um, there's even some of our young singers, you know, that they could illustrate every story they have. Uh, like our last, one of our last guests, Carrie, he had these amazing photographs from him and he was in the army chor chorus. Um, yeah, it's just really nice to look at that material. And then the Houston Chamber Choir has its own archive of, you know, video and, and photographs. So it's nice, it's nice to go back. And knew those uh, those photographs can sometimes help cover up uh, some video blemishes. Isn't that true? That's true. That's true. And also, you know, because Zooms are sort of like everywhere now. And so we, you know, when we came up with the idea of video version, like video podcast, um, we just don't want people to just look at two people talking to each other, right? We want to offer something more. We want to offer like a storytelling like perspective because that's what the perks of having a video podcast. And so having photographs, having footage that can better illustrate what the guests are talking about, it's, it's, it's very great. And also 
you know, like photographs, some photographs um, were like from the 1970s, like 1980s. It, it was like very hard to find them, like to, to, like to hunt them down. But then again, like I have heard some um, guests um, telling me that they actually very enjoy finding the photographs because, you know, it's, it, it's like they can, they can like live at those moments again, that's like 30 years ago, 40 years ago, um, although it is very like hard to find, but it's, it's, it's just like, um, like a very good experience for both of the guests, uh, for me as a video editor, and also for the, for the viewer, for the patron as well. Hey, new. once they start, they can't stop. They'll send us two or three, and then like, throughout the day, the email thread starts building. Started, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we ask guests to do for the uh, Behind the Music podcast is to put together a Spotify playlist. What have you learned about our guests from their Spotify playlists? Well, I'm super surprised to have learned. I would have never thought that some people, there's like two groups of people. There are people that are in music and listen to music, but there are people that don't listen to other music except during work. And that kind of surprised me and amazed me. It's like, it's a level, a different level, you know, of the way you appreciate music and the way you can hear it. Um, but there's also guests that are a little bit more pop, you know, that what you might expect. <laughs> and right. it's a little bit more country than what you would have thought. <laughs> so of the three different um, iterations of With One Accord, we've got Music Monday, we've got Behind the Music and the Education Spotlight. Which of those is the most time consuming? I think we're commenting, we're describing our kids, right? But there's like Music Monday has an order that works like clockwise. Like, I love it. It's like a, it's, you know, you know what, what to do on Mondays and there's like this big push during the week, but there's two times where, you know, it increases. It's like we're, we're working on a machine kind of thing. And, um, and there's a lot of things to produce in it. And we review the material many times. But then the behind the music has all that, you know, things that you can't, um, the surprise element. You don't know what you get out of the guest until the interview. And then it's like a Pandora box. You know, we have like, um, like dedicated personnel to work for each segment. So it really depends on, you know, each person's workload like and then each segment because I know Carolina works a lot with like Music Mondays. Uh, music Mondays are usually um, like on the screen usually less than 10 minutes but then you know behind the scenes there are a lot of like communication between Carolina and the choir and you know and also um, uh, with Ryan Edwards to our audio engineering that also has to do a lot of polishing the, the audio so it's, you know, it's, it's a label of love right there. We put a lot of work and a lot of time into that. And also with behind the music, uh, spend time on, you know, doing researching the guests because some of the guests carried out on, uh, have mentioned before that they were before our time. So now we have to do a little bit of research and then also follow up with them with uh, all of the photographs, all of the materials that they want us to highlight. and. Also the same with Education Spotlight. Yeah. You know what I want to add, Sinjin, which is really like, that. I think that's one of the reasons I love the podcast project so much because the whole team is involved. So even though we have roles, specific roles, and we're on top of certain aspects of the podcast, of the three segments, um, everybody, we don't work independently. Well, there's a lot of like creative talking or um, we share skills, you know, we share... Um, we proof read everything as a team. Um, so it's nice. It really feels like a work environment, you know, like a, like a team effort. Mm -hmm. That's nice, especially in the isolation time. <laughs> and how much time do you have to spend sorting out my virtual backgrounds? <laughs> we've, 
had some we've had some interesting uh backgrounds disappearing right? acts i would say <laughs> I think one of the things yeah. that um, I didn't appreciate was just the file transfer and how much time that takes. Because as you say, Nu, we uh, record the Zoom interview and we record it uh, on my computer on QuickTime. And I then have to upload that to the Dropbox and it can take hours and hours for a, a one hour file to upload is hours and hours. And you begin to realize how much data is involved. And it's, it's huge, isn't it? But Sinjin, that's where the fun is. That's where we are like having so much joy. We don't know if it's going to upload or not. The thrill of not knowing there's, um, yeah, the uploading is, it's, it's so fun and kind of like a different world in reality because we have to upload to all our platforms. So let's say Anchor, and then the, some of them kind of auto reproduce to Apple Podcast or Google, but then the YouTube one is a big one. And if there's any hint of a storm, a winter storm, a hurricane or whatever, you know, you want to call it because we get one every two weeks or so. <laughs> the internet is, is at its worst. Well, look, it's a, it's a relentless cycle. And it's one of those things that once you start, you, you can't start. It has to go on because you have those deadlines to, uh, to make every week, twice a week. So uh, well done. I know that uh, it, it's, it's, you love doing it and you do it so well, but it can be uh, a headache sometimes. So thank you, Carolina and Lou. Thank you so much for all that you do to produce these podcasts we appreciate it yeah thank, thank you, you so Jen. it's so fun to work with you thank you well we spent a lot of time talking about music monday and behind the music now let's turn our attention to the education spotlight which is the third element of the with one accord podcasts and it's great to be able to talk to april harrison emily jenkins Emily, let me start with you and ask, how does the education spotlight tie into the larger uh, mission, if you like, of the chamber choir? So we find education, educators, students to be absolutely essential to the choir and to our community and to music education in general. So part of the reason why we decided that this education spotlight should come out of the With One Accord podcast because there are so many amazing educators, music educators and students that are in our community, that are in our choir and that are a part of what makes Houston Chamber Choir great. And we wanted to highlight what they're doing to make all the differences that they make and all of the hard work that they are putting in, especially during these times to still have really great experiences for their students and for the choral community. Talk a little bit about Hear the Future, which is uh, a program of the choir that has been going for years and years and years. Right. So here the future is uh, an annual choral invitational festival that is a, just another way that we aim to highlight the remarkable success of these educators and of their fine students. And, you know, we, we curate this programming where we highlight from different ages, from elementary to high school, all of the wonderful things that they are doing in their classrooms and just show them off to the world and, you know, let everyone know that Fantastic music education is happening. They are working hard and there is a really bright future for choral music and for students. Well, April, you host the Education Spotlight podcast. So what's the, what's the division of labor between yourself and Emily? Emily is my, I believe I've always called her my partner in crime when it comes to um, educational programming. Um, she is 
absolutely an expert in all things that are on trend, um, that are appealing and import of importance um, in that educational scope. So I often go to her um, for advice on what themes to approach, um, what guests to approach for the podcast, um, all of that good stuff. So, yeah. And I understand that the very beginnings of the podcast came out of uh, a grant that the choir got. Yes, yes. So um, in the earlier um, months of our podcast, it was just for the music. Um, and then we decided we wanted to kind of develop it a little bit further um, and kind of add more video components to that as well. So the Houston Arts Alliance and the mayor's office actually created a grant, Let Creativity Happen Digital Grant, um, where mm -hmm. they focused on all digital content that was made during the first time of the first moments of the pandemic to kind of just reinvigorate the community spirit um, for arts education, for um, performance, and just kind of keep us connected as well and with positive and energetic um, programming. So that's for performance and visual arts. So um, the Houston Chamber Choir, we um, wrote our grant and we thankfully um, received that um, to kind of you know go forward with that idea that we had. And within that, Education Spotlight was birthed. Um, we started with um, kind of a following up with our Hear the Future participants um, from like, some of our later years. Mm -hmm. And it was just really magical catching up with them, um, just letting them know that we are here. Um, we are so appreciative that they're keeping the music going, keeping music education going in these uncertain times. And yeah, it was just, like I said, it was just really magical to kind of connect with them again and share it with our community. Emily, how do you decide on um, what you're gonna talk about? Your, your themes, if you like. Yes, that's a great point. You know, April and I come together every week and sometimes it's just, here's what I've been thinking about. And sometimes that's, I've been thinking about that too, or maybe we should do that in a month, or maybe we should do that in two months. And often we try to align it with what's kind of going on in um, music education, or whether it's like around the TMEA conference time or solo and ensemble, or students are preparing for college auditions. So we try to also structure it around what's going on in the calendar year. Um, and then, mm. you know, coming up this year, we also knew that for a time to lift up, which was, you know, normal, normally our here the future time, we wanted to lift up educators. And so we, we really tried to focus on celebrating them, lifting their spirits to finish out the year strong. So those, those are kind of some of the things that go into it. And a lot of it is just April and I just bouncing ideas off of each other and just getting the wheels going and kind of trying to also um, center it around what's going on in our time. And I should say that TMEA is a Texas Music Educators Association. Yes. So when you've decided on your topic, April, yeah. how do you go about lining up guests? Yeah. Um, well, in a lot of cases, um, after those first episodes where we had Hear the Future um, participants, it got a little bit trickier, kind of trying to nail down um, more guests from outside of that Houston Chamber Choir um, general community. Um, so what we had to do was in the summertime, we hosted an education roundtable where we um, asked a few of our singers, um, supporters, and as well as our educational consultants, Sally Schott and Eddie Quaid, to kind of just come together with us and try to devise ideas in how we could improve on the podcast, um, what we really wanted to have a po the podcast achieve as far as goals. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, we got a stellar list of individuals that were super positive, energetic, keeping the music going, as I said before, um, in innovative and creative ways for their students in their community. And from there, um, it kind of just takes off every month. And we've 
kind of went from just the Houston area to um, reaching out to people in California and Georgia and the East, further from the East Coast. So it was just a really, really awesome time connecting with them, researching a lot more. I'm learning definitely a lot more about choral music education than I ever thought I would. Um, so it's just <laughs> really wonderful finding my place here um, in this education scope. Well, Emily, what sort of reaction have you had from choral directors uh, around the area, around the greater Houston area or beyond? Yes. Um, I mean, generally, we have had really positive, fantastic um, reactions about what we're doing because we really try to keep in mind what educators need and what might be beneficial to them or to their students. And sometimes that's highlighting their good work, you know, empowering them to finish the year. Sometimes that's giving them repertoire ideas. You know, we're curating playlists now for Women's History Month that might jumpstart some repertoire ideas. So, you know, we've had some really great reception about um, the things that we're doing that are, that our goal is to help them, whether it's find repertoire or um, help them, you know, brainstorm new ideas or also connect with people that might be a great connection for them or, or their choir. So we've had a great reception so far and people have been so supportive about participating and really excited to share their voice and share their ideas with us. So we've been really grateful to everyone. April, do you think that the podcast is helping to strengthen the choral community. Absolutely, and I definitely hope so. Um, I, like Emily said, we've gotten amazing feedback, um, not only from our guests, but also um, from the community, our community of patrons for the Houston Chamber Choir. Um, and what we really, really want to make sure that we achieve going forward is just just that strengthening our connection with our community, our existing community, but also branching out to um, other explorative areas where we are just, you know, ready to help these individuals shine and help tell their stories because they have such amazing stories. They have such amazing drive for music education. Um, and it's just really important that everyone out there know. Hashtag Coral Joy. Hashtag Coral Joy. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> we should say that the Education Spotlight airs on the last Friday of the month at noon. That's when it's, uh, it can be accessed uh, online. April, Emily, thank you both very much. Thank you, Sinjin. Thank you. It's always such a great time to talk with you. Well, before we go, I'd like to bring everybody back in because we have something very special right now. We have a cake, but before we do that, let me just say that as host of Behind the Music, it's my privilege and my pleasure every week to work with these wonderful people and to talk to a great deal of very wonderful people. So it's my pleasure, thank you very much. Now, we have a cake, and what do we do with the cake? We blow out the candles. So everybody, if you are ready, take a big deep breath in on the count of three. One, two, three. Make a wish. Well, thank you very much for joining us for this very special edition of Behind the Music, celebrating the first anniversary of the Houston Chamber Choirs with One Accord podcast. Um, before we go, I'd like to say a very big thank you to those who have joined us today. To Robert Simpson. Thank you, Sinjin. I'm Mariam Kilili. Thank you so much, Sinjin. This has been a lot of fun. April Harris. Thanks, Sinjin. It's always awesome speaking with you. And Carolina Borja. This was a pleasure. And Neutran. Thank you, Sinjin. It was a blast today. And Emily Jenkins. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all very much. I'm Sinjin Flynn. Join us again next time here on Behind the Music from the Houston Chamber Choirs with One Accord series. Does this feel good? Look good? Sound yeah. good? Yeah. My hair will get curlier because it's drying by the end of the interview. <laughs>
<laughs> I put plenty of product in mine so that I don't get the frizzies. Oh. Um, so that once we start, we just we just carry on until the end, uh, so that we don't have to do a lot of editing. Um, right. Well, if, of course, I did interviews myself for years and years, but it was never quite this complicated. We no. <laughs> um. Do you have ice cream? No, it's a it's a latte. Oh, okay. I was about to be very jealous. No, no. <laughs> I think that sometimes the emotion is conveyed behind that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well. If you're good with us, we don't want to spoil the interview. Before. Yeah, I feel like I'm like watching like a live studio <laughs> audience. <laughs> For the live audience. <laughs> there we are. Ta-da! Thank you so well much. Well done. That oh, was wonderful. The Houston Chamber Choirs with One Accord is your one-stop shop for choral joy. If you enjoyed this podcast, help us to continue our mission to grow the esteem and appreciation of choral music by sharing, reviewing, and subscribing to our content. As a 501c3 nonprofit, support from listeners like you allows us to continue making new and exciting programming. For more information about us and how you can support our work, please visit HoustonChamberChoir.org give.